14? 13. That's right, 14 is Friday. Um, good practice today. We, uh, you know, we, we, we kind of tapered down some of the time of the practice, but really doing more concentration work, uh, competitive stuff. We did some two minute at the end there. Defense did a great job with, with pressure. Um, good to see those are, remember, one of the facets I was talking about before spring was to create pass rush pressure, and we're doing that. So it's good to see some a number of guys, including the guy behind me that's always in the backfield. So it's good to see that. I think offensively they did some good things in the red zone session. Um, you know, there's a lot of good give and take uh, about what's going on out there. You know, which are really good ingredients of a good team. So we just got to finish strong now. You know, we're at the point where um, this was the last physical day, short practice, but did some physical work. Friday will be more. They'll be in just helmets, and we'll do some situational stuff non-contact stuff on Friday and hopefully show a, a good showing on, on Saturday. So that's the plan as we finish up the week. Have you been uh, maybe pleasantly surprised with how many young guys like Alvin and a lot of guys at other positions have really stepped up this spring and kind of shown some things? Shoot, Alvin, shoot, Alvin's been here three years since I've been here, you know. <laughs> but he's still a young player, though, you're right. It's in the COVID year, gives us another year. So, yes, we got a number of guys like, you know, I'll use Alvin as an example. He has been here a couple years with me. And yes, he's still a young player in terms of his years, but he's, he's, he's been around and been in our system for a good bit of time. So it's good to see those guys kind of step up and let their natural instincts kind of go a little bit more because they're confident that they know what they're doing. So they're playing faster. And then when they're playing faster, you really get a chance to see their ability. So that's what I do like you know, so with some of those guys that, that are like him that are kind of in that sophomore category. You know, technically he's still a young player, but because of COVID, it's really, you know, he's going on in his third year here. So, um, but, you know, he's a great example of that. And we need to just continue to keep building on some of the success of these guys. I asked them all before we started spring about having a, a short little checklist of things that they need to personally do for themselves to improve on. And they've been staying, you know, staying true to that, you know, really trying to fix their game from a fundamental standpoint by their positions. Um, you know, they're doing a really a, a pretty fabulous job with, with doing that. So I think collectively as a group, offensively and defensively, there's so much gain and growth that happened over these last 13 practices. And, you know, it, it'll show. It'll show on, 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 on Saturday when the, when, the, when the fans get a chance to see it. But it's a good place to be getting out of spring, being in the position we're in, knowing that summer is really, I think, is the biggest part of our improvement will be in the summer. It's a little longer period of time to do more football. They'll work against each other uh, a lot more in the summer, and I expect the team to be that much better, if, you know, benching off of what they did this spring. We saw Nico Reed returning punts a couple Saturdays ago. Has there been anyone else in the mix with him uh, competing there? And, and also, how is a kick returner look for you guys? Uh, with the punt returners, Nico is, is one of the guys out there. Chase Penry is one of the guys that we used a year ago. So we'll continue to use both of those guys. Chase has just been in and out because of, you know, his his injury status. But, you know, Nico is, you know, he's he's a gifted player. You know, he was a great player, two-way player in high school. And I remember when we recruited him, he's a fabulous receiver. You know, he's a really good receiver, too. And he played uh, defensive back. And, you know, we needed him last year to start on the defensive side, but we wanted to use some of his offensive talent in other areas, and we were able to do that in special teams as a returner. And he's he's pretty dynamic. He has just a natural feel, good vision. Uh, he's got good body, you know, play strength too. He's because even though he's not uh, a 200 pounder, he's like 175, 180. He he does have some play strength where people bounce off of him. You know, he had a great that great. Uh, a kickoff return that he did against Utah, you know, they, they thought it was for a stop because the guy came and hit him. He just bounced off of it and continued on and ended up breaking the thing for, for a touchdown. So we're really encouraged by him. I think on the on the return side, he's a, he's a part of that too, along with Jason Oliver. Both Jason Oliver has been working with the returners on both the punt and kickoff return. But the other guy that I think that we missed last year that was a factor for us the first year was Maurice. You know, Maurice is a factor in the kickoff return game. He's healthier now. He's actually getting some live reps. Um, he'll get some live reps this, this Saturday, too, so he's recovered from his injury. So it's good to get him back, but he's that extra piece in the return game. Yeah. Is Saturday going to be kind of a standard 1v1, 2v2 type scrimmage? Or do you know what the Pretty much. You know, we don't have, you know, a lot of depth, so it's probably going to be very similar to what you guys even seen the first time uh, in the first scrimmage. We uh, 
you know, my goal is to try to get 60, 65 plays. Um, and try, we only have ones and twos. Offense really has uh, ones and maybe, you know, another, their twos are short of alignment or two. So we got, we got two linemen that are trading reps with the second group from the first group. So we just got to be careful with the number of reps they get. And we, we're trying to hopefully get out of this thing without, without having anything that happened on Saturday. You mentioned a couple times this spring about the importance of kind of elevating the second team to try to close the gap with mm -hmm. the first team. But in terms of the offensive line, has that been an emphasis with the first team and trying to elevate them as well, just given how that unit struggled a little bit last season? You know, it, it has. Our, our second team has actually elevated and closed some of that gap with our first group. But like I mentioned, with, with us being short, you know, we have a veteran starter that's playing with the twos that are helping the communication. So that's usually the, the biggest drop off is when the twos don't have as much knowledge and, and experience as the ones. Uh, but now that we have, a, you know, for example, Casey Roddick and Tommy Brown are the two that have been getting the extra reps with the second group. They're able to help those guys identify what they're looking at, great communication. So it allows the twos to actually play pretty well. Um, but that's, that's the reason why I think there, there isn't really that much of a drop off with our twos and our ones. Um, but it's been helpful because we have a starter that's really technically playing with the twos that's helping out. Overall, how has that unit kind of progressed over the course of these 15 practices that have been kind of pretty important for them? I think pretty good. You know, Travis Gray, you know, as a, as a true freshman is, you know, he's, uh, he's learning the game at this level. You know, he's doing some really good things. And, you know, when he makes a mistake that happens and he gets beat, you know, he understands that, wow, I can't do that. You no, know, he's kind of doing that, you know, I can do this, but can't do that, trying to figure out his own kind of, his personal game with his skill set and what he needs to maximize in. So he's, he's, he's learning by the trial by fire scenario, but he's doing a really a, a pretty good job. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, Austin Johnson and Noah Finsky, that's kind of been the fierce battle at center. Those guys have been going back and back, back and forth. Um, but Austin and, and Noah both together have, have really made huge steps of improvement. You know, Austin's not, a, he's a totally different player than what we saw last fall. You know, so it's good to see that. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of the other new guys. You know, we got a couple of walk-on guys with Jack Seaval and, and Ben Resnick. They're, they've gotten better, you know, because they've taken a lot of the two reps and, and you know, they got a chance at some point in time to earn a scholarship here because of their development and what they're doing. So uh, I'm, I've been very pleased. I've been very pleased. I wish we just had more depth there and we need 15 linemen there instead of we only have nine. So at this point in time. I know uh, JT has been limited this spring, but how productive have, have these practices been for, for him from a mental standpoint and also just being able to go out there, go through the motions on 7-7 seven and seven and just get some, some reps under his belt? It's, it's been good for him. It really has been. It's unfortunate that he can't get more work than that. That's, the, that's his challenge that he you know, fights every day is that he only gets the 7-on-7 seven seven reps and he doesn't get any team or anything like that. So his development in his mind, I'm sure, would tell you is not good enough because he's not getting, you know, the, that type of work. But he's got the summer to, you know, he should, when we get back uh, in June, when we start the summer program, he should be clear to go be full speed. So he should be kind of in the mix of doing everything that all the other quarterbacks are doing. And he's just at the, towards the end of that, you know, process of time that he's trying to uh, get himself where he's 100% cleared. He's just not 100% cleared yet, but we think that that will happen by June. Any guest play callers this week? Any what? Guest play callers or anything like that? Uh, I don't, maybe you guys. If you guys are in the booth right next to him, you can maybe give a suggestion. You know, it's kind of open air, right? So you can kind of talk to each other. You can kind of give some suggestions if you want. Yeah, come up with something. Flea flicker, reverse, you know, a double pass, those things. If it doesn't work, we'll kind of shut up. Yeah. So, oh, that was a bad call. So, yeah. Why did Mike call that? So, but, um, we're going to have some fun. It was a good, it was really a good spring. You know, we got two more practices to go. I want to finish strong and, and, and show the, our fans really what, 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 what to look for in the fall. You know, it's definitely some promising stuff that we're doing. And we need to showcase a little bit of that this, this Saturday and then continue to work this summer. All right. All right. Thank you.